Let's take a look at how to calculate the confidence interval for the population proportion. Here's your formula for estimating a population proportion. And because we're working with a confidence interval, we have to have a lower confidence limit and an upper confidence limit. Here we don't have too many inputs for this one. We really have uh, p hat is your sample proportion from the sample you've taken, and n is your sample size. And the other thing we have here is uh, a z value, which uh, allows for some sampling errors. So let's take a look at that. Let's just say, for argument's sake, we have a 95% confidence level. You can actually set any confidence level you want. The most common ones used are 90, 95, and 99%. Well, if it's a 95% a confidence level, then the significance level is the complement of that, or 1 minus 95%. Thus, a 95% confidence level gives you a 5% significance level. We remember that from earlier in the semester. And the significance level is delineated by the Greek letter alpha. And in the formula, we divide by 2 because of the, because of the symmetrical, symmetrical nature of the normal curve. If you recall, the normal distribution is symmetrically distributed around the mean. So if there's a 5% significance level, that means 5% of our data are not in our, our target area, but because it's symmetrically distributed, half of that, or 2.5%, will be higher, and half will be lower. So back to our formula. We're taking our sample uh, proportion, and we're going to subtract this z value at the alpha divided by 2, which we'll explore a little bit more. Uh, and then we're just taking the square root of, again, the sample proportion it gets filled in here and the sample size here. Okay, So let's get back to this z value at alpha divided by 2. So alpha is your significance level divided by 2. 95% confidence would uh, give you this value here would be 2.5%. So what we really want to find is what z value would you need that would give you 2.5% in this lower range or 2.5% in this higher range. Now you could actually get out a Z chart and look it up and see what Z value corresponds to 2.5% or what Z value gives you uh, where 2.5% is greater than that which would be 97.5% or you can use Excel. In this example we're confidence level of 95% we're just going to put it into uh, this formula which is norm.s.inv and we're going to put in 1 minus our confidence level of 95% divided by 2. The ABS part here stands for absolute value. And the reason I did that was this way it won't give me a negative value. and It just makes it easier to plug it into the formula. If you didn't use ABS, you would get a, um, a value, a Z value of negative 1.96. But it would be the same absolute value. Okay, so we would actually literally plug 1.96 where this is in the formula. So we would just put in our sample proportion, put in our uh, sample size, and then put 1.96 here, and that would get multiplied times whatever this comes out to, and that essentially is correcting for sampling error. Okay, so here's what a, a finished spreadsheet would look like in Excel. Put your confidence interval in. Here's our z value calculation. Then we would put in our p hat or our sample proportion. In this case, it was 15%. This particular problem had a sample size of 693. And then this, which looks a little bit complicated down here in the bottom, all this is is taking that formula we started with and just working it through in Excel. So it's actually quite simple.